Lamborghini is widely regarded as one of the foremost supercar makers the world has ever known. So when one of their test cars fails, it's big news. The replacement for the Lamborghini Aventador was recently being put through its paces in the streets of Italy, but all isn't quite going to plan for the new model. Today, we're discussing the Lamborghini Aventador's successor, breaking down in testing. So stay right where you are. Let's jump straight in then. What's going on? News broke last month that Lamborghini's replacement ride for the Aventador, which we first saw back in 2011, has hit a snag or two in testing. Engineers for one of the world's leading supercar companies found at least one major problem during testing, as a test car failed whilst out on Italy's roads. The car was reportedly left stuck in day-to-day -day traffic, which is pretty embarrassing for the automotive giant. The test driver was unable to move the car off the road, or even towards the side, which brought plenty of stares from onlookers. And this will be extremely worrying for Lamborghini, as it points to what is more than likely going to be a serious problem. The car was recovered by the company shortly after, as they set about trying to figure out what had gone wrong, but not before fans were able to get plenty of snaps to flood social media with. The camouflage test car gave fans a glimpse of what we can expect when the replacement drops, featuring split headlights above the indicators. However, the company had opted to just put stickers on the back of the car where the taillights should have been, so luckily the problem didn't mean that their test driver had to drive the car in the dark. Some insiders have claimed that Lamborghini is planning on naming the successor Revuelto, which continues their theme of naming their cars after Spanish fighting bulls. Apparently, they have applied for a patent. What do you think they should call it? Next up, the company has debuted the Urus S. Stay with us. Lamborghini announced the luxury-focused Urus S last week, an SUV which differs slightly from the Urus Performante. The Urus S offers a new bonnet with cooling vents, as well as a new front and back bumper designs. It will also differ slightly from the Performante in the fact that it doesn't have the dual-tone carbon bonnet, nor the extended roof spoiler. Fans of the new model will have a choice of wheels ranging from 21 to 23 inches, however. As you would expect, the car is simply stunning, and whilst the exterior hasn't changed all that much, the company has focused on extra luxury inside. Greater levels of customization are available, including fabric colors and different materials, which means you can basically kit out the interior however you like. The Urus S will use the same 4.0-liter V8 engine as the Performante, which is capable of producing 666 brake horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. All of this means the car is capable of reaching 100 kilometers per hour inside three and a half seconds, which is quite incredible for an SUV to be fair. Another slight difference between the Urus S and the Performante is the suspension. The Performante uses sporty fixed coil springs, which is actually better for handling and performance, whilst the Urus S uses the adaptive air suspension from the previous model, allowing for a more comfortable ride as well as the ability to rock out off-road. Are you a fan of the Urus S? Next up, Lamborghini have expanded their horizons. Stay with us to hear about it. In some of the more bizarre news we've heard of late, Lamborghini have actually moved into the honey space. Yes, honey, from bees. At their plant in Santa Agata Bolognese, you can find a world-class apiary, which is actually home to around 600,000 bees. Around 20% of these bees actually forage in the local area, meaning Lamborghini are fast becoming an environmental heavyweight these days. Unfortunately, for fans of the sweet substance, however, it's not available for sale. The apiary was built back in 2016 in a bid to improve the company's environmental image, and it turns out it is actually flourished. The bees have mated more than anyone could have expected, with the company's 13 hives becoming a hive of activity these days. Also included in the apiary are a network of cameras, scales, and bee counters, all designed to monitor our winged friend's behavior, as well as how much nectar and pollen the little guys are collecting. Lamborghini wants to monitor how the bees are currently being affected by climate change, but so far it doesn't seem to be affecting their output all that much, as they are responsible for producing more than 400 kilograms of honey per year. So what happens to it then? Well, Lamborghini distributes it to their employees each Christmas as a token of their appreciation for all of their hard work over the year. Pretty cool, right? Were you guys aware of this? News of a renewed partnership between the firm and an Italian airport next. Stay tuned. If you ever find yourself passing through Bologna Airport, you will more than likely notice plenty of Lamborghini bits and pieces knocking around. That's because the world-renowned automaker signed a deal with Bologna Guglielmo Airport back in 2013, and they have recently extended that deal for another three years, which is set to bring with it plenty of new exclusive features. The airport features a Lamborghini exhibition space on the ground floor, which welcomes travelers to the airport, and that space has recently undergone a pretty big transformation, as it's now home to a permanent Lamborghini car, as well as plenty of other bits. One of the coolest features is the 
Follow Me car, which of course is a vehicle which guides aircraft to their bays as soon as they land. Bologna Airport's Follow Me car is now a Lamborghini Hurricane Evo, complete with brand new yellow and black livery. And if you're lucky enough to be able to afford the airport's VIP service, you can expect exclusive transport to and from the airport in a Lamborghini Urus, which is also pretty cool if we do say so ourselves. Lamborghini CEO Steven Winkleman said of the extended deal with the airport, this special collaboration continues between our company and Bologna Airport, before adding that the collaboration serves two purposes. It shows how ingrained Lamborghini are in the local area, whilst also serving as a business card of sorts for people who come from all over the world. The company have paid tribute to the Beatles now. Stay with us. Legendary Liverpool group The Beatles have recently been honored by Lamborghini as the company have embarked on a journey around London. The Lambo 400 GT 2 Plus 2 left from Abbey Road, heading to Savile Row, while taking in other famous sites along the way. The company decided to honor the band last week, on October 5th, on what was the 60th anniversary of the band's Love Me Do single. However, many have wondered why the journey didn't take place in Liverpool, possibly from the Cavern to Strawberry Fields or Penny Lane. Of course, the band recorded a lot of their music at Abbey Road, but they are still more synonymous with the northwest city of Liverpool. However, it was almost certainly a nod to their last ever appearance in public, as they famously took to the roof of Savile Row Apple Corps on January 30th, 1969. If you look carefully in Peter Jackson's recent Get Back, you can see the car on the street. It is widely acknowledged that each member of the world's most famous band were avid car nuts, so it was a nice tribute by the company. It's just sad John and George weren't around to see it. What did you guys make of Lamborghini's tribute? And finally, the Urus Performante has a new Pikes Peak record. Lamborghini have added to their long list of accolades recently, as the Urus Performante has set a new Pikes Peak International Hill Climb record. The track is widely acknowledged as being one of the toughest in the world and boasts 156 corners and sharp turns over its almost 13-mile length. However, that isn't the toughest part of the track, as it drops by around 3,000 feet in some places across the course. Also known as the Race to the Clouds, the Urus Performante performed brilliantly over its run, with Pirelli test driver Simone Fagioli pushing the car to its limits. The driver clocked in at a time of 10 minutes 32.064 seconds, which was a new record in the production SUV category. The car showed off some excellent handling around the bends, as Fagioli was able to show off just what it was capable of. Fagioli spoke of how difficult the challenge was going to be before the race, but acknowledged that the team has done a fantastic job preparing for this, before adding that the car is super reliable and that it conveys a real feeling of confidence. What do you guys make of this new record set by the Urus Performante? Let us know below. As usual, thanks for dropping in on us today, and remember to tune in again next time, when we'll be discussing all sorts of other cool bits and pieces. And why not do us a big favor by liking and sharing today's video, whilst also sharing it with any petrol heads you know of. Bye guys!